Hello, welcome to the Squirrel Tale. In this video, I'm going to be showing you my underhammer rifle. Um, now, an underhammer is a percussion gun in one of your later, well, actually one of your last traditional muzzleloader designs. These were prominent through like the 1850s into even the 1870s, even into the early cartridge days. Um, I've seen some that were made into 1900. This one I particularly have is what's called a Hopkin and Allen's action. What they work, how they work, now there's different designs of them, but this one, the trigger guard is your mainspring. And then you, your hammer has notches, which I'll show you in a minute. Or has a hook on your hammer. And then your um, hammer has notches in it. Um, and to fire it, you pull back the hammer. That rear notch will catch. That was on half cock earlier. And pull the trigger. I, was, I just fired a cap. I have videos of me actually firing it later. Um, but you can see, maybe shine some light on it. You can kind of see the hook on the end of the hammer there. And it's hard to see, but there's notches in the hammer. Very simple design. Um, now again, a later period muzzle loader. Um, so the advantages of an under hammer over a traditional cap lock were one, the simple design. I mean, you have significantly less moving parts. You have, you know, only a couple moving parts in the whole gun. The other big advantage is when you're shooting it, because it's below, you have nothing distracting you um, when you're firing, you know. Flint locks are obviously the worst when it comes to this because you have a flash going on, so that takes a lot of training to deal with. But even a cap lock, you have the hammer moving, you have potentially little sparks from the cap. Um, this is, shooting it is no different than your you know, cartridge gun. I mean, it just, it's like a cartridge gun when you're firing it. All you see is your sights, no distractions. And something I've heard, but I've never actually confirmed, but I could kind of see, because the hammer is below the gun, there's going to be a little force enacted on when the hammer strikes. If it's on the side, it might cock the gun a little bit. Being on the bottom, it would just push down. It would, or it would push up. And you already have the force of gravity pushing down. So it might not move the gun as much. I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, I, don't, I think that would probably be only in a very like long-range target thing where that would be an issue. But... Um, so the story on this particular gun, the action, well, the first thing I acquired was the barrel. There's a guy that I shoot World War II guns with, and he knew I was into muzzlers, and he bought this barrel a while ago, I think at a flea market. Um, and he knew I was into it, and that there was a, into muzzle loading and building, I mean, he figured there's a better chance of me building something out of it than him, so he decided to sell it, um, to me, um, so, you know, got it for a nice price, and I had it around, I bought it, I think, last winter, what's interesting about this barrel, is it has a false muzzle, now, I did a YouTube short on false muzzles earlier in the week, but, what they are, is they're designed to protect the crowning 
of the rifle when cleaning and loading. So, if you look through it, uh, if I can get her in the sunlight, you can see it's rifled, and that rifling um, matches perfectly. Now, the only good way, to, I mean, there's different methods, but the way to do a false muzzle, the best way is to, before the barrel is rifled, make this part, um, and then, and from what I'm guessing they probably did, is they drilled out the pins and had it where it would be pinned in place, put the pins in or they drilled the holes for the pins, and then they cut it, and then they pinned it on, um, and then after they pinned it on, they then would rifle the barrel. That way your rifling would be perfectly um, in line with the main barrel. So... And, you know, when you're cleaning, you have that in there to keep it protected from the ramrod. And when you're starting a ball, you start the ball in there, get it with your short starter, ram it home, take that off. And again, then your ramrod is never hitting your actual crown. And then they put this front post in there that covers up your sight picture. That way, you don't shoot it. You make sure you know to take it off before you fire. This will end up going down range, and that would probably not be a good thing. Um, but yeah, that's the barrel on it. Um, so the action. I was at Dixon's Gunmakers Fair, and I seen seen that action and I got to thinking you know that this that would just be perfect for this barrel so as I picked up the action there um the butt plate I just have a standard iron butt plate and then the stock years ago you know we would get some scraps of walnut for firewood and there's a piece that my father set aside because he thought it would it might make a nice project wood um you know my brother got him he worked at a log place um sawmill um and you know we probably kicked it around the garage for at least five years so it was definitely good and dry. But holy cow, when I got cutting into it, the grain on it was just, you can see, it's just gorgeous. I mean, for a piece of walnut, you can't ask for better grain, I don't think. Especially for a piece of wood that was didn't cost anything. But when I started, just to give you an idea, kind of looks something like this but a little bit bigger i mean it was a legitimate hunk of firewood basically so imagine this log about this wide that's what it looked like and i was able to get a nice looking stock out of it um and i put some lime in target sights because it's intended to be a target rifle and that's why it doesn't have a ramrod. Although I do intend on hunting, which will make not having a ramrod interesting. But it should be a fun gun to use. So now I have a couple clips of it shooting. So watch them and have a good day and be sure to like and subscribe.